I'm Mickey Colton. And I'm Jed Dillon. And this, this is, is the Utica, Utica Rally Cross Series. Series. Imagine for your fourth event of 2015 in Papa Rone, Italy. Papa Rone! Now, this is not the same track that we went to in the previous two seasons. That track was, you know, not affiliated with any township. It was called Coastal Italy. Yeah. And was a completely different circuit. But this is a similar type of track. It is a coastal circuit. But it's located in a different part of Italy. It's so. also a dirt track as well, so it's going to be a lot of challenging. I know one face in particular that's going to really have shine today. What do you think is going to be? Uh, it would probably have to be Carson Bechtel, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but. Actually, you know, I think before we see the line, starting lineup here, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to see how Mason Powers does. I mean, Mason Powers is the points leader right now, the rookie. But starting out here, we got Alex DeMarco, Alex Hawkins, Joseph Ernesto, Robert Piet, uh, any names for you? Um, I'm excited to see what Nick Pericles can do in that yeah. number 16 car. Adam Dunlap could also be one that you know goes for a surprise. He was so consistent last year. Yeah, he's used to you know dealing with new courses. And hey, he started off in Star Chad as his debut event in the first season. I think so. another name I want to point out is Tyler Kalesa. Finally had a top five finish last last race. Maybe he could pick it up and maybe get a win. Watch out for some of your veterans here. Tyler Benoit, Matt Evans. Matt Duell might even be able to get a good run today. He's got to really get himself out of this big hole. Only having 11 points after three races. Also, look at Stephen Carter in last place there. He's going to be the last car out today. He's a solid race car driver. He could have a chance at stealing the top spot because the later you go out, the Don't better the chance. Don't count out are. Matt Evans either. You know he hasn't had a good run yet, and it's gonna come. You know that's how he works. But first up to bat, Alex DeMarco not having a good season so far. Hopefully to pick it up at Paparone. I know, and Alex DeMarco, this track could be more to his liking because he is a road race ace. This is more of a traditional road course, more actually, of a rally course. Actually, actually, he just blends in with the track. Where the hell did he go? I know <laughs> these cars can get pretty dirty out here on the dirt. <laughs> wow, I never thought you'd get dirty on the dirt. And whoa, look at that move. He's going to wow, cut yeah. the turn off a little bit. Rockets through the race course. This is looking pretty all right. Now, this is a normal. Oh, uh, almost had a, a little too much run. speed. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think he had a lot of confidence. First man up in, on a new track. Wow. Yep, now, this track is pretty standard, like a rally track, but this part is where it gets a little different. The downhill. Now, this was not initially planned Whoa. for this racetrack. Um, some of the Utica Rally Cross Series officials told them to change it last minute, so this is completely new. Yeah. That's going to be the top spot for Alex DeMarco. Now, Alex Hawkins on racetrack in Barney's Revenge. Barney's Revenge. Now, Ready. no missing this race car on the racetrack, even with all the dirt. I know, it still shines. It's purple and green. <laughs> Interesting car, but Alex Hawkins, a great short track racer, has history on dirt, Whoa. but it's a little bit of, you know, it's a little different in how they race. Well, you it. know, Alex Hawkins hasn't had a, even a top 10 finish so far. He hasn't been able to pick it up and really show us what he's made of. Maybe today is his day. So far, a, a lot better run in that la that turn there than Alex yeah, this DeMarco. This is definitely going to be Alex DeMarco unless he, you know, bungles up the oh, last section of the course. Oh, hits the bumps perfectly. Now, if he can find a smoother way down and see how he does it, he decides to go the upper route and it's a lot smoother. Yeah, and that's going to be a 41.91. Sorry, a 47.91. Wow. My mistake. Um, as Joseph Ernesto for Top Notch Racing's on track. Now, Joseph Ernesto, last week, as you recall, second place overall. Yeah. So, great effort by him. You know, that even, even a second place victory where he can still give you a lot of points and give you a good standing you know getting no. first place it's great and you get a win but second place isn't as bad isn't that bad either remember there's only a one point difference in the series between exactly. first and second yeah. so i mean well technically two because oh. the, uh, you get a bonus point if you're leading at the end there yeah so only two points difference but onesto's a little lower in the standing so he's got to really pick it up here today and here he goes, coming off the bat. Not a bad run so far. He's got to hit these bumps well. Now, see if he takes the upper end. I mean, he didn't get enough time to watch the footage. He does. He takes the upper approach. And, Ooh, oh, no. Fire. He's going to miss the finish line. That's going to slow him down slightly. He's going to cross the line. 53-54. That's actually the slowest time thus far. So DeMarco's speed in the beginning really helped him out. Yeah, now Robert Piet, the Flying Dutchman, ready up the bat. Now he's going flying in the air. I know we're happy to have Robert Piet in this series. He's always a you know a friendly face in the garage area. The teams like him. Oh, remember last week I, I pointed out I wanted to start a elimination style series of rallycross. Yeah. I talked to the man. He's really interested in the offer. Wow, that is amazing. I know. I, I think it's exciting. We'll have to see what how the lawyers uh, fare with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, Robert Piet, a very good race car driver, and another car that definitely stands out in, among the dirt. Exactly. 
You know, the dynamic is completely different. Because remember last week we were staying in that luxurious five-star resort. Oh, man, that was so oh, good. Oh, such good. Do you remember? What, what did you get at the at the buffet there? At the buffet? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I, that, I, that buffet was so long. A 50 I got by crust- the way. Second place overall. I got the parmen crusted uh, t- tenderloins. They were delicious. Nice. I got the lobster thermidor. Oh, did you? Oh, I bet that was mm, really good. That was really good. <laughs> it's great to be wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Um, <laughs> we are, we're wealthy. Are we? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I that's, how, that's how you're able to afford a new Lamborghini each week that you wreck. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I get a different color every time. One that's rarer than the next. Mm-hmm. What? You should get transparent next time. Oh, yeah. It could be really invisible. Really mess, <laughs> mess with stoplights. But, oh, not a very good run for Michael Aurelio <laughs> so far. Hitting every bump possible. Hopefully yep. he doesn't drive my Lambo. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Michael Aurelio, you know, his... Expertise seems to be more with the stock car, so he does have some wins over here. He does. Now, here he goes, picking up the upper end. People seem to like this way better, but you got to hit that turn right. He does a lot of speed, a 51.91. Third place over all of the five cars that have gone up, as Adam Dunlap for Team Spite is on track. Adam Dunlap hoping to pick it up a notch. He's still in the bottom ten of points. He needs to get himself out of this hole that he put himself in if he wants to really defend his championship. Yep, and uh, I mean, he was able to pick it up a bit last week. So now this is his opportunity to maybe, you know, dig himself back up to the front. Well, okay. if, this, if, he, if, if this is the mountains that he created from digging himself up, he should be doing pretty good. Mm-hmm. But, hey, just wait. We'll get to Dead Man's Curve later on. That's going to be the ultimate mountain. Yeah, that's going uh, yeah, to be the ultimate climb. Adam Dunlap having a very good run so far. Let's see if he can finish it strong with the final downhill. Good entry to that turn. The whoop section is going to be pretty nice to him. Now he just has to get through this last section of the course. Now, if he really threw everyone off exactly. guard. If he hits the left, he does. He gives a little bit more momentum. A lot of speed. A 48-70 for Adam Dunlap. Second place overall. And, you know, I, Mason Powers is on track right now. And I'm excited to see what he can do. But I do want to point out Alex Hawkins is still on top. I know. The Barney's Revenge is looking strong so far today. I mean, it's still early, but hey, he is having a great effort so far, and he could actually potentially go for the record for earliest win. He, he might be able to. Now, Mason Power is really powering through. He's yes. got the power! Power! Got the power! 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 Got the power! Surge! Oh. As Mason Powers, you know, he's a exceptional <laughs> young man. Really good race car driver, and uh, this is tracking really well. This could be one of the times to beat. Exactly. As long as he doesn't mess up this final stretch here, this is the toughest part. If you hit one section of it wrong, it's going to flip your car over. Just oh! like that, you cursed him. And oh, man. Mason Powers, a DNF. That is going to be heartbreaking for him. As Colin Bartell for 12th Man Racing on the circuit. Yes, Colin Bartell hoping to break his curse here. He hasn't had a good season so far. A lot of these drivers... I really need to have our big holes, and these it's almost the middle of the season. They need to start picking it up fast. To be fair, around this time last year, Colin Bartell started getting those victories knocked off, yeah, ex- so yeah. it, could, it could repeat again, but let's see. If, you know, Bartell's having a decent effort so far. This could be something that tracks well. Exactly. Colin Bartell really cruising through here. Now, this is, the hard, this is the one part he's got to figure out. He might be able to get the top time as long as he can hit this last end smoothly a little rocky. Was, I know that was rocky. But it, he actually kept it at a good pace. So that was interesting. Oh, he gets to the line. And he gets it. 47-12, that will be the top time for Colin Bartel as now Nick Pericles in the 16 heads on to the racetrack. Nick Pericles coming off that uh, race two win. I mean, he, he you know, race three at Blackpool, not as, not as fortunate. But Nick Pericles hoping to bring himself back. Still second in the standings. Uh, and with Mason Powers DNFing, yes. he just needs to finish. He's going to be able to, you know, pick up some points on him. And this is tracking relatively well, so he might be able to steal that points lead back. I mean, if you notice, there's a, oh, there's, there's, no. a, there's a pretty good gap between Mason Powers, Pericles, and the other, the rest of the gang. I mean, as long as he can be consistent, get some top five finishes, he should be pretty steady. And he might be, take a huge leap over Mason Powers as long as he can do well today. Yeah, a little bit of a hiccup for Pericles going through that um, bend in the in the course. Yeah. But this is oh, looking pretty quick. Uh, keeps it down there. Gets it. 50 29. That's just going to edge into the top five, and that will overtake Mason Powers in points. Is now Tyler Chico Kalesa is on the racetrack. Yes, Tyler Kalesa really shining now. He's starting to pick up the pace. You know, Blackpool doing very, very well. It's, it's really nice to see these new drivers really, really shining. Well, you know, I, um, Tyler Kalesa, he makes these race cars, but he doesn't really get to drive them that much. So now that he drives the cars, 
He now knows how they drive, and he knows how they work. We, so. we, we, just, we, we explained his advantages. I mean, when a person knows how the car runs and you test drove it, you're the reason why the car runs the way it does. You should be pretty good at it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And this is a very small team, too, in comparison to these other guys. They don't have a lot of crew members, and Plessa works on the car himself. Here we go. It's Coming to the line. 47-49. That is a great time for him. Second place overall. Hawkins has kicked down the third. And now William Duncan, the Thunder, is on racetrack. <laughs> see what he can do. Now, last week was a little lackluster for him, but he did... Oh! oh with the spin! <laughs> Keeps it on all four tires, <laughs> and he's going to continue along his I love how we way. turned into little school children when <laughs> someone almost did. I was like, oh, no! Man, <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> William Duncan is uh, not going to get the top time, unfortunately, today, but he could... You know, oh, pick it up. oh man! As, as soon as you it. say that, yeah, he hits the side bumper there, really putting him to a complete stop. You think that would give someone pe some people whiplash? I mean, I know he had helmets, but that must whip him around. Well, a lot. they do have you know head and neck restraints, which are a oh, mandatory no. thing as he capsizes as, it. Yeah, as you wait, he might be able to get no. No, that car is stuck. A DNF for William Duncan, and that is going to be the second DNF today. In fact, he's currently in last place. Now, next up is Ty Benoit, the dirt specialist here now. Let's see if he can really shine in one of his main territories. Now, uh, he's been trying to catch up to Matt Evans with wins. This could be a good place for that to happen because, you know, this is a good racetrack for him. The only disadvantage he has, he's never been here before, so he hasn't been able to figure yeah, it out. Yeah, but he is in the, the back stretch of the people. He's been able to see where the strong suits are on this track. Really smooth start for Tyler Benoit here. Now he's just got to hit the final stretch here, and he might be able to get the top time. He's looking really good for car number three. Now, Benoit went winless in his first season, but did really well in his second yes. attempt at the Utica Rally Cross Series. Oh, man. Tyler Benoit coming, coming to the finish. 46-88. That's going to blow Colin Bartel out of the water. So Bartel not going to get that victory he was hoping for today. It's now the stuntman, Seth Cole, on track. Seth Cole has one win so far this season, his first win. Then he went down in, in Elkhorn, and then he picked it up a little bit in uh, Blackpool. See how he does today. Well, no, he went down in Blackpool. <laughs> oh, that's right. He did go down in Blackpool he did, as well. He did good in uh, in Elkhorn. Did he? Yeah, he did all right. Oh, okay. I might have mixed it up a little bit. I'm sorry. You know, I, when you travel across the globe, sometimes you get your facts mixed up. I mean, they don't really give us any paperwork. We're just winging it up here usually. Yeah, come on, time. statistician Judd. Yeah, Judd. God. Oh, come on, God. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> sorry, that was not Judd again. I just like to get They don't there. have mics. <laughs> but a 47-74. Great effort by Seth Cole in the number six machine. Is now the Black Mamba, Matt Evans, on track. <laughs> And uh, the Black Mamba, as we point out in Yuma, this is going to turn into the Brown Mamba. Is, uh, this car, a lot of these cars well, more are the, black. More, more the transparent art. Mamba, because you can't even tell if he's driving the car or not. <laughs> I know the. It seems like the the dirt really sticks to these, you know, you know, darker race cars. Well, maybe they put some like. Well, I mean, they wax them up a little bit. Maybe the wax, I don't know, it sticks to the. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think that these cars are pretty shiny when they go Whoa! on the racetrack. <laughs> Whoa. A little squirrely for Matt Evans. This is actually uh, this is not a bad effort for him. If he didn't hit that wall, he was almost tracking the Todd Benoit pace. Now, this, Todd Benoit so far is, might be able to win this if no one can dethrone him. He goes for the lower route. Actually, goes for a mid route. Yeah. 48.05 yeah. does make the top five, but that's actually sixth place at the moment. Next up is Matt Duel hoping to get out of this rut after a terrible run I think run he's still trying hole. to finish last race. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, two minutes and twenty six. I think that's the longest run I think in rallycross history. Not counting like you know Dead Man's Curve, yeah, where exactly. it takes four minutes to finish. But I mean, yeah, that was probably one of the worst runs we've seen by a driver. But you know, it's the persistency. And, oh, try to do that that side cut there. That just it only worked out for a couple people. But Alex DeMarco got it to work. But uh, yeah, first man up as well. He decided, hey, I'm ballsy today. I'm gonna. I cut think it everyone over. else decided not to go with it. But Duels, you know, he's trying anything he can to gain some time. Exactly. If he plays it too safe, then he's not gonna gain that many points. I know, and it might. It can either make or break him. And today, it's it's not gonna break him, but it's definitely gonna not make him either. Let's see what he can get here. 51-42. Not what he was hoping for, but not horrible either. As Chris Aurelio on track in number 15. 
Chris Aurelia hoping to get a good time as well. Coming off the first jump here, a little uh, slow. It seems like he put the brakes on. I don't know what was going on. It's a little was... yucky for him. Now, Italy's been good to the Aurelio brothers, but yeah. this new track so Remember far... The battle? Is... Remember yeah, the battle? Yeah, that was... the brothers? That was a good race then. Yeah, that was a that was a stellar event. Also, that was the day of the man of <laughs> myth, the legend. Billy Bishop. Billy Bishop. <sighs> he went down the mountain. Oh, man. those good times. Good. You know, I, we need to hire a bard. So that they, that they could sing songs of his, his <laughs> glory. <laughs> we need a new man. We need a new man, myth, the legend. Who is it going to be? I think it's going to be Carson Bechtel. Yeah, I think so, too. Now, we got a really, really rough ending for Crystal. Really a little yeah, bumpy. he just needs to finish it. Oh! No! Oh! oh! No! He misses it by left of oh! the car lane. A heartbreaker for Chris Aurelia. That didn't. Well, it wasn't a good run for him, but he could have beaten maybe Joseph and Efto. Oh, that really is gonna kill him. But he's uh, gonna be the best DNF for us for sure. Yeah, that will be the uh, <laughs> Powers and Duncan, but he is probably furious right now. Oh my goodness! You know, he just, it just the car flipped at the worst time. I mean, it was right at the end. I mean, we've seen some close finishes. <laughs> I mean, unfinishes basically by that one. But yeah, I think. Did uh, Kansas City have a couple like that? Yeah, I think they there were, was a couple like that, over. too. Yeah, Kansas City was a mess. Oh, that was a crazy Yeah, that did not come back this year. <laughs> but, yeah, but we got D uh, Dylan Thoreau here. We, yeah, we talked over most of the run, but he's actually tracking relatively solidly. And, and you know, a great season for Dylan Thoreau. Yeah, yeah. Thoreau the arrow. <laughs> Dylan the arrow Thoreau. We got the, it. Yeah. 48-96. Not a bad time for Dylan Thoreau. But mm -hmm. Carson now, Bechtel from, you know what? It's, it's, uh, it's this is... you know what, he's not doing the yoga machine proud, that's for sure. I mean, Carson That Bechtel... car has a, that has a curse to it, I think. It's just, every yeah. driver behind it has really struggled. I think the only exception was maybe Thomas Beatty was the only one able to get that car to a Beatty, Beatty, Beatty in the look at this. Tracking okay, but it's going to slide off into that corner. And, you know, we you think it's the driver, I think it's the car. I think it's, actually now I think it's maybe it's both. Well, you know, I... It, it, it is a combination. That's why it's a, it's a team, not just the driver and the crew. I mean, you are a unifying team, so whoever works on these cars is just as big a part as the driver himself. And whoa, oh. doing a pendulum effect there, just spinning on his rear tires. This is drives oh right God. into the wall. This is horrible for him, and he, I think he's screaming over there about some handling issues. Oh. As now, Nathan Minazuki, second to last car up, last week's winner. We'll have to see how he does. But I do want to point out with, with Bechtel, um, these cars are all the same. These are all the same vehicle. They yeah. all come out of Evans Engineering Incorporated, but the teams are in charge, you know, setting them up for the race. Yeah, they got to get them. They, they got to tweak them a little bit, prep them. You know, they got to make sure that they're really sturdy and ready to go. And sometimes, if they're just not prepared or they're in a rush or something happens in the travel time, and sometimes yeah. things just don't go right. And with Bechtel, they seem to have the same issue every week. They just can't get that car steering properly. That's why you hope that a lot of these bigger teams like Benoit, Motor, you know, Benoit Motorsports might pick you up, and when you're on a bigger team like that, you usually will have a good car. Yep, and uh, Nathan Minazuki, I'm um, having a decent run here so far, but it, actually, no, this is going to... Oh, he's been boy. Pretty... Oh, boy. <laughs> Man, he's bucking Bronco. 52-82, not a good time for Nathan Minazuki. Now it's the last car up on track. Steven Carter for Allen Racing, the driver who cannot DNF. <laughs> yes, exactly. And don't sit, don't don't ruin it now, John. He almost at Blackpool made that flip, but was able to really recover. Yeah, bad run for him last week, but this is a good chance for him, you know, pick up some speed now. Not good in that first jump there. I'm not sure if this can dethrone Tyler Benoit, who had a near flawless run. But I know exactly. I mean, Tyler Benoit just every single turn was sharp, perfect, and hit the downhill great. But Stephen Carter not having a bad time either. Yep, as Carter going through the last stages of the course, he's the last chance to dethrone Tyler Benoit. And Whoa. nope, the whoops are not treating him well. No, they are not. You have to have the right amount of speed going through there. And man, they really kick you around in the late stages of this course. I know, especially in the downhill there. But here, a 51-57. Not no. going to be a good time. But the winner of... Papa Roan is Tyler Benoit with his fourth career win, I think. Yeah, yeah. good effort by Tyler Benoit. Colin Bartell in second place with an exceptional effort. Again, Mr. Inconsistency, it would seem. Exactly. Tyler yeah. Klesson in yeah. third, followed by Seth Cole, and Alex Hawkins is going to stay around for fifth. Then you got your, your, your uh, six through ten here. You got Matt Evans, Adam Dunlap. They seem to be hovering next to each other lately. 
Dylan Thoreau, Robert Piet, and Nick Pericles rounding out your top 10. You know, solid effort for Piet in the 14. Matt yeah. Duell, 11th place. Not something that most people would be proud about, but hey, that's good for him. Steven Carter in 12. Michael Aurelio and the other Aurelio brothers also, you know, they're struggling. Nathan Minizuki not going to keep the momentum from last week's win. And Alex DeMarco, your top 15. And then you got your bottom five. Carson Bechtel again. Joseph Anesto, not a good turnaround. Chris Aurelio, Mason Powers, that's a surprise. That's a huge to disappointment yeah. for him. And William Duncan is going to finish dead last today in 20th. A uh, little bit of a delayed reaction from Elcor. Nick Pericles is your top guy so far. Number one with 62 points, followed three points back by Seth Cole. And then you have Tyler Kalesa right behind him, tied. Followed by Todd Benoit as well. Yep, and Mason Powers running out the top five now. He was the points leader. Dylan Thoreau's in sixth place, another rookie, along with Nathan Minazuki, William Duncan, Michael Aurelio, and look at that, Adam Dunlap has cracked the top ten. So good job for that team, as uh, you know they were really hoping to you know pick it up a bit. Exactly, and then you got the Matt Evans, Alex Hawkins. Hawkins really picked yeah, it up. Exactly, Stephen Carter, Colin Bartell, Chris Aurelio. That is disappointing for Chris Aurelio to see him that low in the points. Robert Piet still. Having issues getting up there. It's just, you know why? Because Colin Bartell, Matt Evans all were able to, you know, get ahead of him there, so. Exactly. And then you got Robert Piet, Joseph Vanesto, Alex DeMarco, Matt Duell not in last place now, but the man in last place is Carson Bechtel. Yeah, still trying to get to 20 points. He actually hasn't gotten to a race worth of points yet. Exactly. And that's, that's a tough break for him. You don't want to see that coming out of a season. He's a rookie, but sometimes you just have tough breaks like that. Yep, so that does it for this round of the Youth Karate Car Series. Next up, we're going to be going to Budva Montenegro, a track that we've gone through all three seasons. Budva is always really tight competition, really short track, really, really times are really close together, and we can see what happens next week. Yep, so from us here with the Youth Karate Car Series, we'll see you next time. Adios.